I can't wait to get started. This is so much fun. We're cruising in comfort and style out here on the Double Dolphin. I'm Gail Kivestad, your host, and we're on the docks down here at the Santa Barbara Sailing Center. And if you haven't come by yet, you've got to. This is the third time we're down here, and we want to see you out on the water. Hi, Skip. Welcome, Gail. Oh, it's so nice to be back here. Oh, I'm so happy you're back down here on the Double Dolphin. And look at how beautiful it is. Oh, oh thank my you. goodness, you got new cushions. We did. We got oh, some pillows. Oh, look at this. Oh. So you get to come out here and go whale watching in luxury. So you've got Friday night jazz cruises. Yes, Gail, we have every Friday night, Memorial Day to Labor Day, we have Friday night jazz cruises and it's wonderful. We, oh, we, come we, out here, see the dolphins, sip champagne, go cruising around. It is wonderful. Okay, so anybody can come on a Friday night, but then if you want to run it, you can have your own party out here, can't you? Yes, the Double Dolphin holds up to 42 passengers oh. and it's the best venue in town to see. It is. I mean, just sail down the coast. You can have your own food here. You can come and have whatever you want, right? Yeah, we can cater it. You can bring your own you catering, catering as well. Absolutely. Oh, think about that. Your next party or family reunion here on the Double Dolphin. I feel like I'm in a hotel bathroom. This is so nice. Look at this. Beautiful tile. Absolutely gorgeous. We're cruising in comfort and style out here on the Double Dolphin. So these are the newest addition to your fleet, aren't they? They are. These are the uh, Catalina Capri 22s, and we just uh, purchased four of them, and they are a lot of fun. Great little day sailor. Okay, so how much time does it take before you can actually sail one of these? You know, we rent these out to the general public that already know how to sail, but if you want to take one of our classes certifying you with the American Sailing Association in three days, which <gasps> is a total of 20 hours, three days, you'll be sailing. A weekend. All Just a yourself. weekend and you can take your own family out sailing. Now I think that's really exciting. It is so much And fun. I know so many people here locally that started out with kids here with you. Yes. Here at this camp. We have great camps um, in the summertime and then after school during the school year as well. And We start the kids in sailing camp at six years old. Six. And it is, wow. and then we have uh, Santa paddle boarding and kayaking and that is so much fun. Well let's get started because I want to go out and have some fun on the water. Skip, you have so much more out here. I can't even believe it. Last year you had the kayaks and stand up paddle boards, but now, look at all this. Well, we, we got busy over the winter and, and just kind of bought some more toys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so fun because this is the place to come to get your toys. So you can just go out with any kind of uh, level, right? Absolutely, we have the beginner boards all the way up to the carbon fiber boards. It's great, when the, and the stand up paddle boards. And then the kayaking, we have the single and the tandem. Um, kayaks that we, we just cast off and right here. This is such a great playground. It is really a wonderful place to come, to get exercise, to be out with your family and your friends and having fun, and then also to connect with nature. Look at this out here. I can't wait to get started. Skip, thank you so much for having us out here. Oh, you're welcome. And now if somebody really wants to learn how to sail, what does it really involve? What, what does it take? We have classes certifying you with the American Sailing Association, Gail, and what people do is they come down and they take a series of classes, depending on what their goal is. So we do from basic keelboat sailing all the way to advanced coastal cruising, uh, out to the Channel Islands overnight so they can then bear boat charter here in Santa Barbara. They can then bear boat out at the Channel Islands um, or anywhere in the world. And if you're sitting at home watching this and you're thinking about a lifestyle choice for you or for somebody in your family, come and see Skip at the Sailing Center because this is a beautiful life and what a gift to be able to go sailing and have that knowledge. It is a wonderful area to learn to sail. It's one of the top in the world. So come out, check out the Double Dolphin, Come and get a kayak, surfboard, or just come and start sailing. Sounds great.
Thank, Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. My pleasure. Welcome back to Living Local. I'm Gail Kivestad, your host, and I've got my gardening gloves. We're here at the Fairview Gardens, also known as the Center for Urban Agriculture. And this historic property is a working educational farm. They've got the farm stand every day, and they're also at the local farmer's markets. Let's go explore. We're here with Angela Miller-Bevan and the chickens. Yes. You guys have chickens that everybody from the public can just come visit anytime? We do. We have chickens and we have 120 new baby chicks, which grow so fast that they're hardly even baby chicks anymore. But they will be producing more eggs um, in November. And this is all important for the land. Yes, it is. It's very important for our land because the chickens help to eat bugs. They also help to fertilize all of the crops. So they have a very big, plus make eggs, big job here at the farm. Okay, well, let's go grab some chickens. So in November, she will be laying eggs for us. This little one. You're going to go lay eggs? Oh my gosh, should we let her go? Yeah, you can put her down. There we go. Happy chickens. Oh, look at him. Oh my God, they're so nice. Look at that, he's just balancing. Woo. So we're here in the pollinator garden, and this is a garden for the garden, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is our, our garden here at Fairview Gardens that's food for all of our little pollinators that are going to go out and recreate all so over. all the bees and all the butterflies and hummingbirds and everybody, they come in here for all these special plants. They do. And we're also, these are all local plants. So we're teaching people about what to plant in your garden so that you can have pollination going on. I want butterflies in my garden. This is so much fun out here at Fairview Gardens. And this is open to the public. So now when can people come? How do they come? What's the deal? This is an educational farm. That's what our part of our um, mission statement is. And you can come here anytime, you know, Monday through Friday from um, 9 a.m. till dusk, same Saturday and Sunday. You can also schedule a tour to come on a tour or you can just stop by the farm stand and there's a brochure out there that gives you a self-guided tour. So you can just come, walk your kids through the fields, yeah. just come see what everything is, self-guided, yes. or with help. Or with help, and we want more people here. It's important because we are educating our community on how important local organic food is for you. I'm here with Tim Hewer, and he is the executive director here, and guess where we are? We're at an old historic property that was part of the Hollister estate. You all know Hollister Ranch and J.J. Hollister. Now tell us about this. So Mrs. Hollister apparently stood on the back porch here in 1895, looked out to the ocean and said, "'Tis a fair view, thus the name." And the Fairview Gardens that are still here, and this has been an operating farm. And tell us, because this is a nonprofit, tell us about the mission. So we're here as a community resource to make critical connections between community, agriculture, and nature. And it is a community resource, so this is open to everyone. Now I notice you have summer camps going on. Tons going on here. We're open seven days a week to the public, uh, sunrise to sunset, and uh, lots going on. So this is the children's garden where kids get to come and everything's eye level for them? Everything's pint-sized and appropriately scaled for children to learn all about agriculture. And look at this. I want one of these at my house. The kids get to sit in here. How cute is this? Oh my goodness. Incredible space for kids to learn and play and explore all things related to agriculture. Wow. So they can come out here and pick tomatoes and then they can grab eggs from the chickens. And they do planting too. All the planting in the garden is done by kids. Okay, so tell me about the water because right now 
We all know Santa Barbara's in the middle of a drought. So tell us about your water situation. We're conserving, uh, we're conserving to the max. So we've cut our water usage in half from last July to this July. And uh, we're on city water, you know, so uh, it's really important for us to conserve. The rates just quadrupled July 1st. And so everything we do is on drip irrigation, as you can see. And the plants are still going strong. Everything's going strong, you know. We, we consider ourselves a leader in, uh, in irrigation innovation, so um, we're trying to do the best we can and play our part in the drought. Okay, so Fairview Gardens, the Center for Urban Agriculture, is a nonprofit. So you do rely on donations, don't you? We rely heavily on uh, the community's help. So donations, time, anything you can give, it'll be a rewarding experience. And time. If you can come out here and volunteer, you will not be disappointed. Now this is the place to come when you want to go farm to table. Open every day. Look at all this stuff. So tell us about this. It's open every day. Anybody can come. Open seven days a week. Anybody can come. It's the best way to support us. It is the best way because look at all of this. I can't wait to go home and cook. <laughs> thank you so much for having us out here. My pleasure. And thank you for all that Fairview Gardens does for our community. Thanks so, so we'll much. see you living local. Welcome back to Living Local. I'm Gail Kivestad, your host, and we're here at Pathpoint, where they connect people, purpose, and the community since 1964. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Gail. Oh, it's nice to see you. Nice to have you here with us. And it's exciting to be here at Pathpoint with Cindy Burton, who's the CEO, because Pathpoint has been serving the community for over 50 years. And you help people with disabilities Correct. and empower them to get jobs and housing. Now, how did this all start? Well, back in 1964, believe it or not, a small group of Santa Barbara residents were really living in an environment where you had President Johnson declare a war on poverty. You had the signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and people with significant barriers to really being able to participate in those efforts. This was an opportunity to help people get in the workforce and become a member of their community. And so a group of concerned citizens, if you will, formed a group in 1964, and they've been helping people ever since. It started with a grant, and they wanted to be able to help people with disabilities learn to do things for themselves. And it really works, doesn't it? It really works. What it demonstrated was if you give people the skills to learn how to live in the community, you deal with stable housing, you look at transportation, all the barriers that people with disabilities face every day, that once you address those needs, then the workforce is much more accessible. This is Jennifer Newbold, our director for PathPoint's Behavioral Health. Hello. Good to meet you. It's nice to meet you. And it's so wonderful to be here to learn more about what PathPoint does. Okay, so tell us about behavioral health services and what exactly is that? So behavioral health services at PathPoint are unique in that we serve people who have psychiatric disabilities, who have substance addictions, people who have been homeless. And those services are delivered through a variety of programs. We have housing. For individuals, like I said, who've been homeless, they can come into PathPoint owned housing. We have 26 units that we rent to individuals. It's subsidized by the City Housing Authority. We have a mobile team serving 130 people in the community. We have a, a psychiatrist on our team. We have nursing staff. It's multidisciplinary. We go from Elwood Beach to Carpinteria. 
And how do people get involved in this program? How do they get referred to you? It's a good question. People are open to the county alcohol drug mental health services, and so the county will refer individuals to us. They may live at one of Housing Authority's developments, Artisan okay. Court, El Carrillo, or Bradley Studios. If they live there, then they're eligible to receive our services at one of those three locations, or if they need housing and they're homeless and they just need a place to go and we have a vacancy, they can apply directly to housing and then we'll support them through our Pathpoint housing. And a lot of these people you have helped for years and years because you've been here for years, haven't you? Been here for 28 years, actually. Love working here. We're with Elena Walzak and she's the director for Santa Barbara County. And you're the person that helps people with disabilities get jobs in the community. Well, my great amazing staff is, but yes, we have hundreds of individuals working throughout the county. And you do serve a lot of people, don't you? We do, probably on average, more than 500 individuals each year throughout the county. And again, that's in both uh, in employment services, independent living, and in our community access program. Okay, so now your community access and your programs, tell us about this beautiful art on the walls, because I understand Absolutely. that this was made by people here. Absolutely. This is all part of our adaptive art program um, that's a component of our community access program. And so we have staff who are assisting individuals with an array of disabilities um, and using adaptive Gorgeous. tools. Um, we've created adaptive paintbrushes, adaptive easels for individuals that are using wheelchairs, individuals that may or may not have the use of their hands or their fingers. Um, and so we've come up with really creative ways for them to really let their talent shine, and we're really, really proud of it. Oh, and you should be. And people in the community can buy this art, so if you're Absolutely. interested, contact Absolutely. Pathpoint. And also, if you're out there in the community and you know somebody that needs a service, they can contact you here directly or be referred, correct? Correct. Correct. We do partner with funding agencies, so we do get lots of referrals that way. But if there's an individual in the community that needs services, they can contact us directly and we'll, we'll figure that out. Well, thank you so much. Thank Absolutely. you for having Living Local here and for sharing with us what you do, this important work in the community, and for getting everybody involved in the community and helping people to be their best. Welcome to Living Local. I'm Gail Kivistad, your host, and today we're downtown at the Calm offices, and we're gonna go meet Cecilia Rodriguez and find out all about them. Hello, Cecilia. Well, hi, how are you, Gail? Oh, I'm doing great, and Good. it's nice to be it's here. It's a pleasure to have you here, welcome. Thank you. Now, I understand you've been here for 30 years. Yes, I have been. And I, you started out as a volunteer? I did, I started out as a volunteer. I, ad, I saw an ad in the paper that said, do you want to get involved with this? And it felt like such a compelling mission that I got involved as a volunteer and worked my way through from admin to the director's position over the last 30 years. You know, and it's one of those things where people don't think about the nonprofit as an industry and a career path. That's absolutely and, right. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to hear more about what you do well, specifically here at Call. Come on in and we'll go over to my office and sit down and chat. Thanks. Great. So now tell us how did Calm get started? 40 years ago, 1969, a young um, father killed his son stressed, he was 19 years old. At his trial he said, I didn't want to hurt my son, but he didn't know what else to do. So um, Claire Miles was the uh, Santa Barbara citizen who heard about this through her husband who had been the ER doc the night that baby died and decided she was going to do something. So it's a really simple idea. She brought a f another phone line into her house and she put an ad in the paper, stressed parents call this number and she got 35 phone calls. Right, so that yeah. people out there now can just call or they can come in. I mean, it's expanded so oh, yeah. much. Within a few years, they realized that they needed more than a, a, a kind voice on the other end of the phone, that they really needed supportive services, they needed therapy, they needed parenting classes. So over the years, we really grew into a professional staff of therapists, psychologists, and social workers. And you help thousands and thousands of families yes. in Santa Barbara County, all over the county. All over the county, that's right. So now how do we prevent child abuse here in the community? Well, everybody in the community can play a role because what children need are good 
healthy relationships with adults in their lives. We know that that builds resiliency and that really will protect children. The children that are resilient are less likely to be abused. And those are children that have healthy relationships. And they do have a self-confidence, I think, that comes from healthy relationships with adults. Right. And right. so it is important to foster that in the community and people. And everyone in the community can do that. And so now, if somebody does come in and need help, that you have an in-room service here, and mm -hmm. so children can come, parents can come. Exactly. And what type of specific programs do you have? Yeah, we, if, if a child needs uh, our services here at the center, we have these therapy rooms that we use to conduct therapy. Um, and we believe in working with the whole family, not just the, the child victim, but the entire family. We involve the parents in that. Um, sometimes we'll involve other family members as well in getting past the trauma of abuse. So that they have a whole community of support and that everybody can change because mm -hmm. you can change and you can have positive yeah. and healthy relationships mm -hmm. and you're here to actually teach people how. So if you're out there in the community and you're thinking that you need help or you know somebody in your family that does, please call Cecilia, come and, and talk to the people at Calm because that's what they're here for, for listening and for mediating and for helping you. Mm -hmm. That's right. And tell Tell us about your in-home. You actually go out to the home and you have an in-home program. That's right. We have a team of therapists, social workers that go right into the homes to work with family and provide that treatment for them right in their homes. Thank you for having us to the Calm offices. Oh, it's been our pleasure, Gail. And visit the website for more information and stay tuned for more Living Local. Welcome to Living Local. I'm Gail Kivisad, your host, and we're here with Garrett Kababic. And we are out at the islands, the Channel Islands. Sure are. And how many times do you come out here? Every day. Every day, Santa Barbara, and you can too. Come out for a wild blue adventure. Woo! Woohoo! <laughs> now, you've been out here kayaking for years. Almost two decades. Almost two decades out here in the Channel Islands. And imagine, now, how, what do you see out here? Well, we're sitting in Cathedral Cove right now at Anacapa Island, which is a beautiful place to snorkel, kayak, just hang out and enjoy. We have sea lions hauled out on the beach behind us. People are enjoying kayaking through caves. Seagulls, we've got brown pelicans, we've got cormorants, we've got birds galore. And we've got sunshine. While it's foggy back in Santa Barbara, the sunshine's always out here in the Channel Islands. And you come out, rain or shine, people can sign up. How do they sign up? They can go to the internet. Internet. Good old Google. Go Good old Google. <laughs> and it's a Blue Ocean Kayaking. GoWildBlue.com, BlueOceanKayaking.com. We got a lot of URLs. Go Wild Blue Adventures. Us. And so if you want to do a private adventure, they can rent the whole boat. They can rent the whole boat. Go for a day. We'll have catering available. You can do kayaking, snorkel, snorkel through sea caves, kayak through sea caves. A whole month. We got whale watching. We got dolphin watching. We got all you sorts of watching. All sorts of watching. <laughs> and you can do it all. Now you can just sign up if there's just a couple people, right? Just yep, one person? Yeah, one or two people. Or a whole group, depending on what you want. It's always other people that help all of us get where we're going, right? It's right. It's true. It's a collaboration.